Hey folks, Dr. Atkinson here. Um, this video will talk a little bit more about triads and seventh chords and inversions. Now we've been talking about triad inversions in class for the last couple of days, uh, but now let's actually put a name on these things and see what they look like. So back to triads, here is our C major triad from before, but notice we've got it spelled three different ways. This first way we call root position. Uh, the second one with the third as the lowest sounding note becomes first inversion. And then this last one with the fifth as the lowest sounding note becomes second inversion. Now, what we like to do with these, instead of having to write out root position, first inversion, second inversion every time you encounter these, we have a little shorthand. Um, we call these inversion symbols. Uh, and they're pretty straightforward. For a major triad, the inversion symbol can either be omitted um, if it's in root position, or if you want to include it, we use the numbers 5, 3. Now you may be asking, well, why are these numbers 5, 3, and why are they presented on top of each other like that? Well, notice the 5 and the 3 are indicating the intervals above the bass note. So in this case, the root is the bass note. So if you go up a fifth from the root, you get the fifth, and you go up a third, you get the third. So following those as intervals above the bass note will give you the rest of the notes of the chord. So we can hop over to a first inversion triad and we could see that the inversion symbol for a triad, if we followed that same logic, would be 6, 3, right? Because if you go up a sixth from the third here, the E natural, you get C. And if you go up a third, you get G. As time has moved on, these inversion symbols, have we sort of have developed a shorthand for that. So instead of saying 6-3 for a triad, we just say 6. So anytime you see a triad and a number 6, you're indicating that that triad is in first inversion. And again, the 6 there is literally the 6th interval. It's indicating that there's an interval of a 6th above the base. Now we'll go over to our second inversion triad you'll see a similar thing. If you go up a sixth from the sounding bass note, which is the fifth of the triad, you get a six. But then you also, there's no three here. Instead, it's an interval of a fourth from the G to the C. So the inversion symbol for a second inversion triad is six, four. Again, you need the four there to differentiate it from the first inversion triad, which is just the number six. So those are the three types of positions you can have for any triad. And this will work major, minor, diminished, augmented. And just to show you, we have our minor triad here. Whoa, sorry. We have our minor triad here in root position, first inversion, second inversion. Uh, you can have it with our diminished triad and the augmented triad, same, same thing with that. Now, on to seventh chords. The inversion symbols for seventh chords are a little bit different. First of all, because of the extra note, there are not just three, there are now four possible positions and ways to spell this chord. Uh, the first we still call root position. Now this actually does get a inversion symbol. We call it the number seven. And this is just to differentiate from a triad, which might not have any inversion symbol at all. This one would have a seven to indicate, yes, this is a seventh chord we're talking about. So root, third, fifth, seventh, all stacked in thirds. When you go to having the third in the base, the inversion symbol becomes six, five. And again, we add the five there as a shorthand. And the, the shorthand there, again, is that we want to differentiate from a first inversion triad, which is just six and differentiate from a second inversion triad, which is 6-4. And notice the intervals match up nicely. Uh, for this 6-5, this first inversion seventh chord, you have the inver uh, interval of 6 above the base and the interval of 5 above the base. Now you also have the interval of 3 above the base, and if you wanted to, you could write 6-5-3 as the inversion symbol. But just like I said, with the triads, the 3 has sort of just fallen out of place. Uh, as a shortcut, if you will, we just use the number six five, and that's enough to that's enough information to tell us that's a first inversion seventh chord. Going to the second inversion seventh chord again, this is with the fifth of the chord in the bass, or as the lowest sounding note. Uh, the inversion symbol for this is four three, and again, notice if you go up a sixth from our bass note, you get E, but then you go up a fourth 
C, third, B. Again, over the uh, development and over the, the usage of these inversion symbols, we've dropped the six from the full figure here. And so we just call this four, three. And then finally, for now a third inversion seventh chord, since there's a fourth possibility here, where the seventh is now the lowest sounding note, we now call this one four, two. Again, indicating that there's the interval of a fourth above the bass and the interval of a second above the bass. Yes, there's still a six, and if you wanted to write six, four, two, that's fine, but the standard accepted way to indicate a third inversion seventh chord is just to write four, two here. Just like with the triads, that will work with every type of seventh chord. So we can go over here and see that works with a minor seventh chord. Same way, same inversion symbols apply. That's going to work with a dominant seventh chord, same inversion symbols. And then if we back up, whoa, sorry, uh, back up, we can look at our half diminished seventh chord, same procedure, and our fully diminished seventh chord, same procedure. There is a quick shorthand way to remember this, and it's a phone number, right? So phone number area code first would be 664. The 6 at the beginning of that area code meaning a first inversion triad. The 64 meaning a second inversion triad. Then the phone number 7654342. Again, the 7 being a root position seventh chord. The 65 being a first inversion seventh chord the 4-3 being a second inversion seventh chord, and the 4-2 being a third inversion seventh chord. So if you ever get confused about the order or what these figured bass symbols are, you can just think about what intervals get created above the bass note as a reminder, or just remember this phone number. We'll talk more about this on Friday. So come with questions about this if you're confused or have any other issues you want to talk about.